All right, excited for today's episode because we're finally putting some parts on the Mini that's remained relatively stock the entire time we've had it. The only thing we've done so far was a K and drop-in filter, but don't really consider that a mod. And let's see what we got going on for the Mini today. All right, so we got a set of BC Racing coilovers for the Mini. Have these on the S2000, like how they feel over there. And these are one of the few companies that make coilovers for them. There is KW, but already had good experience with BC. Not saying they're better, but just a familiar brand. Decided to go with these. Came in the other day along with a few parts for that. But this is all on the mini. And let's get going on lowering the old girl. All right, you're gonna start in the engine compartment. You're gonna pull this seal off. This just lifts right out. Set that aside. And then same for this under tray. This just slightly lifts up and pulls forward and it's free. No clips, no nothing. Just toss that aside for now. And then from there, you have access to the top suspension bolts. So there's a 16 here for the strut bar and 13s for here. But we're gonna lift the car up and then take the wheels off and inspect what we gotta take off for the bottom side as well. Now that the car's up in the air, I'm gonna start with just loosening these. Well, I loosened this one already. Got the 13s here, and then two under the cover here. You gotta take that 16 off first. Set that aside, set that aside, and then just up and out. Those are all broken free. Let's go see on the bottom. All right, here on the bottom side, on the pinch bolt, we have an 18 on this side. Let's see if you can see it. It's kind of hidden behind the brake line there. And I just put my hand in the middle, right there. And on the back side, that's a 16. So you need a 16 wrench to hold that. And then on the tie rod end, you just want to undo the bottom. So it's going to be a 16 wrench and a T30 Torx bit. All right, I'm gonna get going on taking this off and then I'll put one of the stock ones side by side with the new ones. All right, we now got the stabilizer link free. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name. We got the bolt undone. We also undid the brake line clip. I'll show you what that looks like with a clip here when it's all assembled again. And pulled the pinch bolt free. Now all that's left to do is give it a little tap. Sorry, I'm holding you guys upside down, giving everybody vertigo. Couple taps with the hammer and this should fall out right here. Just make sure you have a jack supporting it so it doesn't pull the CV joint out of your axle and ruin your day. Got a shop towel here just so I don't mar the surface of the aluminum. Right. And like so, we are free. Well, we're at least we're hitting the jack, so I'll bring that down some. And that should do it. All right, and the first one's free. From the bottom, at least. All right, now that we're taking the top bolts out, it should just fall right out. All right. And free. All right, so I got the front new BCs already set up to how I want the car dropped, about two inches off from the original height. That should close up the wheel gap nicely. Got them measured, separate, separated left to right. And also in the box, we have the rears. I'm waiting for Amazon to drop off the external Torx sockets for that. Those should be here sometime during the day. these out of the way. So yep, yeah, it also comes with shorter end links for the front, stabilizer links, the keys and the adapters for the dampening on the front. Pull those out as well. And then the rears are spring and shock. And we'll do those once the e-torque sockets come in from Amazon.
Just as a quick note before we continue on with the video, don't forget to tighten the camber kit bolts up here. All right, so getting ready to assemble the front. Just make sure the little nipple is facing the back. It's a little bit of a shame that the sticker is gonna be put away, but I'll know they're BCs and that's good enough for me. So you just rotate it so that little guide pin is matching up with this back here like so, and then use the jack to raise the knuckle. There you have it. Now you can start assembling the bolts. All right, we got the bolt and this little arm bracket dealy here. I'm sure there's a technical name for it. I'm not gonna look it up. It's an arm bracket dealy dingy thingy. So this goes before that. You want to feed the bolt through because it has a little arm that reaches around and grabs the bolt. Like so, put the 16 millimeter nut on the other side and then just hit this with an 18 ratchet. Hold this backside with a 16 wrench and that'll do it for mounting the shock. All right, and then you remount the brake cable or the brake line guide like so. So one corner and the next and that's secured make sure everything else is secured everything's back where it needs to be and now we just mount the stabilizer we got two 17 millimeter nuts and a six point allen head instead of a torx like stock since they're new they're super stiff you can do them really quick with the electric ratchet apologize in advance for the noise Now let's just get them snug and then I'll put them down with the ratchet. All right, it looks like I was actually able to fit the electric ratchet in. So I'm just gonna use that to snug it down tight and then finish it off with a wrench. So that's fished through here. Move my hand, the electric ratchet, just slightly under the axle. And that's it. So I'm just gonna finish that off with a wrench and Allen key and then we'll put the car on the floor. Just want to take a second and call out that the VCs do come with a very small five millimeter spacer because things do get a little close without it. Uh, with the 18s, it's definitely touching. If you have a non-JCW with 17s, I don't know if it is as close, but I'm assuming it is. That's why they include the spacers. But I just thought it was a nice little touch because I did want to get spacers for the car anyways. All right, and last thing for the front is to just put the cowl back. That just slips back in. Under, up and under. All right, just like that. And then the rubber gasket just goes right over the top. Make sure everything's snapped into place. Snappy. All right. And that should do it for the front. Yep, channel drains lined up. All right, and that's the front. All right, ride a bit of a standstill until the Amazon truck shows up with my sockets. But here's one we need to take off. That is the 22 E-Torx, I believe. And then, and then there's three E-Torx uh, E-12s up there. Let's see if you can see those. It's kind of a weird angle. The camera's kind of big and awkward. But there's one of them, there's another one parallel to it, and then one back there. Or that's the opposite. Alright, two back there and one in the front. Alright, while I was waiting for the Amazon delivery to come in, I started looking at these external Torx bolts. And, you know, the curious mind wanted to see if a socket could get onto it, because it is still 6 point, right? And I found a 12.16 millimeter will break the bottom bolt free on the shock. I already got one out, so let me do this one on camera. 
I did them all by hand just in case it slipped with the impact not to chew it up and simple like that it started coming free I was able to do the same thing for the top ones up there as well and so I'm gonna stop the camera right here. I am gonna put these all back with the actual sockets. I just couldn't sit around waiting anymore because I ran out of things to clean. And I just saw I missed the whole back side of the caliper. So I found more things to clean. So I'm gonna take this off and get the new BC stuff in. All right, so the lighting's a lot better on this side. So there's a little flap here that you can undo the two 10 millimeter plastic bolts that'll give you access to the e-torx up top and there you go I think you can see that it's in frame yep it is there's one and then the remaining two are back here this one doesn't come out it does it does it does let me grab an eight be right back with just an eight millimeter we can loosen this up and get a little more get a little more space to work on those back bolts Come on, all right, that's out of there. Set that aside. And yeah, you kind of get a little more space. And again, on this one, I used a 12.10 and I was able to break those free. Again, the car is still relatively new. So all of these bolts are like buttery smooth and easy to come off. And of course, this one won't do it. All right, so I guess we're waiting for the actual sockets to come in for this side. All right, so I took a second look at my socket. That one was kind of chewed up on the inside already. I got a relatively brand new 10 millimeter. This one, I don't know how it's escaped use, how it's managed to stick around this long, but this one is nice and sharp. And look at that, like butter. Bolt comes right out. Since those were all broken free and they're coming out nice and smooth, I'm just going to use the electric ratchet to finish them off. And it's off. Alright. And that's the other shock. Found with the other side, if you wedge the pry bar right between here, the lower control arm and the lower spring mount, you can pop the spring out relatively easy. All right, and just like that, spring is out. Just gonna reuse this. Just gonna put this right back. And let's start setting up the new stuff. All right, so in order to, because you do have to reuse the stock shock mounts, in order to get them off, I had to create a little situation like this with a 60 millimeter socket and a five millimeter hex in the middle this holds the nut from spinning and then we just back off the shock with the allen key so i'm gonna do the reverse over here with reinstalling uh, do i have the right one actually I might be able to just yeah let me grab the right allen key for that and let's try this again I don't have the right Allen key socket, so what I did was I just grabbed the flat spots where the adjuster is, not on the adjuster, it can still move, and then just tightened it really quick with a 14. And that's all she wrote. Now we're gonna put the springs in. You make sure you put the height adjuster on the top here, just as the sticker says right there. And then the spring just kind of slides in this area here, like so. You'll see on the locating tab from the OEM spring, there's a spot for the new spring to kind of just like lock into place. And that is in where it needs to be. And let's just tilt this in. And, oops, sorry, arm in the way. And they're in. So this is a little loose and floppy right now because the shock's not in. And let's do the shock now. All right, so the shock's in. My little tripod broke, so I couldn't really get a good angle to fit it in here with the big tripod, even at its lowest setting. What I did was I started with the bolts up top, the E12s, and then used the jack to raise the knuckle up and then sent the E22 home. All right, other than that, 
I just gotta put the little tens back and the eight millimeter to secure my splash guards. And these are done. We can throw the wheels on. I already got the spacers on, the knuckles. And we can see what it looks like on the floor. And that's gonna do it for this one. It's been pretty tough to get out and film the car. It's been raining the last few days, but that's the back all the way down. I don't know why minis don't close up the wheel gap fully on any of the suspension. Front's perfect, but that's it for the DIY. I'll do some cinematic stuff in the next video for this one. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And we'll see you next time.